fuzzy logic of life and death. Despite six decades of proof to the contrary, I still harbor hope that human beings are rational. I know I should know better by now, but despite the illogic and cavalier capriciousness with which most of us think, I still cling to the hope that we will apply reason to our beliefs and logic to our actions. Fat chance. One literally life and death area of illogic and partisanship that crops up and divides us regularly is illustrated by the life v. choice debate, a debate that is often presented by both far right and far left opponents as binary, a right to life absolute versus a right to choose one. It ain't. Arkansas passed a law prohibiting all abortions except those performed to save the life of the mother. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson stated that he signed the extreme right-wing ban specifically to bring a challenge to the supremacy of Roe v. Wade to the U.S. Supreme Court, but that he wished the bill had rape and incest clauses. When I heard Mr. Hutchinson utter these words, I asked myself, why? Why should a ban on abortion include rape and incest clauses? I'm going to focus on the illogic of a rape and incest exemption for the so-called right-to-life far-right hardliners, but before I do, I will clarify my position so we can move on to the subject of the Arkansas abortion ban. My core beliefs. One, every human life is precious and deserves protection under the law. Two, the more vulnerable the life, the greater protection it deserves. Three, the preborn is our largest group of absolutely defenseless and innocent that face daily exposure to intentional killing. Four, no one should have to reproduce against his or her will. Five, human beings, women, should have autonomy over their bodies. Opposite desires, opposite rights, and overlying millennia of patriarchy, theocracy, anti-sexuality, and misogyny are inherently mixed into this LVC struggle. Let me elucidate my position. Life begins at conception, but not the right to life. Granting a hollow sphere of undifferentiated cells the same protection under the law as one would a five-year-old child is anti-science and nonsensical. Somewhere after conception, but before birth, we have a human being that deserves protection under the law. Science divides the divide between embryos and fetuses at 11 weeks of gestation or one-third of a pregnancy. Utilizing this definition as our foundation for abortion restriction screams that elective abortion access should be unregulated, save for the woman's health, during the first three months of pregnancy. For three months, 13 weeks, a woman's right to choose should be absolute. And after that time, a child's right to life reigns supreme. There are many who claim to be pro-life who insist that elective abortion is a personal choice. Many who argue that legally restricting late-term abortions is unnecessary because they almost never occur except to protect the life of the mother. This almost never occur argument is as absurd as from the conception crowds. If late-term fetuses are human beings, and they are, then they deserve protection under the law. Nonsensical arguments that proclaim we don't need a late-term elective abortion ban because no woman ever waits to her third trimester if she's planning to have an abortion are both false and irrelevant. Humans are depraved. Don't believe me? Look at the criminal law cases pending in your area. We're a sick race. Additionally, frequency of abomination does not dictate our need to prohibit it. The abortion has always been with us, so it's okay argument is baseless and completely contrary to progressiveness. Like abortion, slavery ruled the earth for eons and culminated in a pseudo-biblical justification of why it was the white Europeans' responsibility to enslave as chattel black-skinned Africans and their descendants in perpetuity. For 500 years before slavery was replaced by mere oppression and blatant racism, a giant, albeit inadequate and ongoing improvement in inequality. One cannot be both progressive and use the crutch of tradition to argue sensibly for an action that is senseless. Late-term abortions should be just as illegal as killing a five-year-old unless the abortion is therapeutic. Abortion to save the life of the mother are, by definition, therapeutic. Logic tells us that my definition of late term may differ from yours, but it does not negate the truth that the preborn deserve legal protection from infanticide. 
So where is the logic in Mr. Hutchinson's desire to include rape and insect clauses? If abortion bans are enacted to save innocent life, then that is what they should do. If exemptions to an abortion ban are needed, then why limit them to rape and incest? Rather than playing Caesar at the Colosseum with our arbitrary thumbs up, thumbs down, death dealing, should we not instead utilize logic in establishing when elective abortion should be 100% legal? A life of the mother exemption throughout pregnancy is logical. Establishing an upper gestational limit for elective abortion is the path that best satisfies two worthy and opposing causes because unlike most civil rights disputes where we have an oppressor and oppressed, in choice v. life, we have two opposing groups who both deserve equal protection under the law. Unfortunately, nature has conspired against us in rendering a solution that grants these two groups equal protection. Logic dictates that we must create a dividing line where life outweighs choice, lest we devalue our most precious gift and the first right, enumerated in Thomas Jefferson's Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness.